So that's a community house. Yeah. When she said that to me, I said, yes, you've just given mm. me my definition of the family and how I live my family. And I thought it was very, very modern as a definition. Helen, I am thrilled to have you here with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be <laughs> with you. Yes. Today, we'll be taking a look at family. So this is exciting for me because there's so many preconceived notions and ideas around what family is. So I really look forward to hearing your perspective from having traveled the world and spent well over uh, with over 145 families. So I'm sure that the concept of family is well integrated in your, in your life and project. So I'd like to give everyone a quick recap before we go further on your work. So could you please shed some light on your work and what you were intending to accomplish? Yes, okay. Uh, and, and today you'll have uh, the look uh, on the family from uh, the bachelor point of view. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was uh, working in advertising in Paris uh, and uh, I was working with very good communicators and they were saying that, um, th that they, were, they were saying they were good communicators and uh, I always wonder why I I did not know uh, humanity. I would, I would be there in the evening and try to imagine my life in another country and realize I was completely ignorant. I could not imagine myself living in another country. So I decided I would present humanity to humanity. There was a communi communicator missing. And uh, so I wanted to present, I wanted us, all of us to know who we live with and where we are on this planet. So I decided to present humanity. And then uh, how would I do that? Uh, and that was the, the great question about how I would do that. And I could not figure out because finally what I wanted is to look at, I wanted to discover the soul of, the, mm. of women, of men and children. And I, I thought that the soul, you, you see it through the eyes. So I wanted to get near people. Uh, and um, and as I'm a bachelor, uh, I couldn't. Suddenly, I suddenly I asked my friend Jean. Um, I said, Jean, how do I put a man, a woman, and a child and children in the same picture? Mm. And he looked at me like if I was stupid, and the only way uh, only friends can do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Hélène, the family. I said. Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> so I decided I would yeah, so I decided I would present humanity through one day in a life of a family in every country mm. of the world. Because if you want to get to know children, you have to be there in the family. Yeah, if you want to get up in the morning with a child, you nearly have to get up in the morning mm. with the whole the entire family. And that's how it came. Uh, so and now I have lived in families in uh, 100 and, uh, I don't know, 13. I've lived in 118 countries, uh, but I think I lived in families in 113 of them. Uh, mm. so, so I have a look on the family and children and women that is quite uh, unique. Uh, but it's, it was always humanity I was looking for. You know, I, was, yeah. I, didn't, I never wanted to become a specialist. Uh, of the family, uh, so there's many of them, specialists in the family, but I have a hard look on it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think it gives us a good foundation from which to build uh, on this topic with. So I know that, so I'd like to first always define like, what is the family environment that you came from? Because that always helps us build some context as to kind of where we'll go in terms of like the family models that you saw thereafter and and some of the dynamics that you experience. So where, what kind of family dynamic do you come from? Would you say, uh, environment? Yeah, yeah I, I, I have the impression there is no family dynamic in my life very much. 
I was born in the north of, uh, in Abitibi, in the north of the province of Quebec. And uh, my uh, parents worked in lumberjack camps uh, from the time I was uh, four years old. But I was in a born in a rural area, very lonely place where I was born. And, um, and my father did not want to be alone in lumberjack camp. So he brought my mother along and they put all the children in boarding school. So I spent some time with them alone in the bush. Uh, the forest, but we call it the bush, right? Um, and uh, because, uh, and uh, oh, excuse, excuse me. And um, so at six years old, they put me in boarding school. Mm. And from six years old, I saw my family three times a year. Wow. So, so, so family and my mother worked yeah. so hard. She cooked for 200 men, you know, and when I was in boarding school, there was 200 girls at the, on the table. So for me, uh, life was like 200 men on one side and 200, and then... <laughs> 200 girls on the other side and they never met. And <laughs> And, and, and then, we, you know, we were educated by nuns. So naturally, the nuns never wanted or never talked about the fact that we would put them together, right? So, so for me, uh, uh, and at 15, I, it was too much uh, my, uh, for me to be in boarding school. I was like in, uh, for me, it had become a prison uh, because I'm a free spirit. And so I had to get out of there. And, uh, and then my, as I, my father did not want me to do what I wanted to do, so he stopped giving me money. So at 15, I, was, uh, I had to figure out, I uh, had a year in front of me to figure out what I would do. And that was it, I was by myself. So I've been living alone since I'm 15 years old. Wow. And so why naturally I choose the family uh, but for me, it was, uh, you know, I mean, naturally, if I sit on a couch at the, at the, in the, <laughs> at the psychiatry, you know, uh, they will find the reasons to study me. If anybody wants <laughs> to study me, I invite them to call. And um, so uh, for me, it was humanity. And then I started looking in the families. And mm. so it's, uh, it's, it's quite special because... Uh, you don't, I think you don't look uh, at them, uh, at a family uh, the same way when you, when the concept was not so much there in your life, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yeah, which is so powerful because then now when you look at, when you look at family and through your work, how have you come to define what family is? Yeah. Oh, you, you have, uh, you wrote to me the, defi the, the, the dictionary definition. Yeah, uh, of uh, that it's uh, people who are uh, under the same roof, other tribe. Yep. Right? Yeah, it says there a group consisting of two parents and their children living together as a unit and all the descendants of a common ancestor, which is the technical definition. So I'm curious to actually hear what. Yeah, how, how it, you it, 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 I think it would be interesting to have all the definition of the dictionary through through ages, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, because me, everybody, uh, in 1994, there was the International Year of the Family. And then everybody started to ask me, Elaine, what is the family for you? What is the family for you? And I had started this project, but I had not prepared that, an answer for that question. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to present humanity. I was not figuring out what the family was for me. So I was a bit, I did not know. I, I did not have any answer to that uh, question. So I started asking other people that question. So in Chinese, uh, you know, you, it's a sign. So you have the roof, you have the men under the roof, and you have the pig under the men. What does it mean? Is it economics? You know, is it that we're going to feed a family? Is it, what does it mean? In, in, I, I don't know. Yeah. Then you have in Latin, the root, the, the, the root of the word family comes from the same root as the word slave. Mm. and servant wow so so the family was the master and his slaves right that's that was the family wow. right? yeah so uh and in in arab in arabic you have two words you have the extended family and you have the nuclear family and and the root of the nuclear family is happiness of the words you know 
So that's very, uh, so uh, yeah, I suppose when you grow up with a word, you know, where it comes from might make a, a difference. And then I asked yeah. a, an African woman, uh, and there's many, many, many language uh, in, in Africa. I asked, what is the word family in your language? And she says, we don't have that word. So I so thought, oh, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the word, do you have, uh, do you have a family, you know? And uh, so she said, no, we don't have, we have uh, houses. So she says, you have the blood house, you know? Uh, this one, you, you cannot do anything about it. <laughs> you know? yeah. always You're born into it. It's like, yeah. You're born into it. There's always <laughs> Christmas to remind you that you have one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and then you have the, uh, your, um, uh, your life house. That's the people you invite into your life, the friends, the, the children of your friends, the people you invite. They come, they go. Some of them stay mm -hmm. all along the life, but there's not very, not very many of them that make the road through life, but some of them do. And then you have the community house. So you need to go mm -hmm. to the city and you say, Joseph, can you keep my sheep? I need to go to the city. And Joseph says, don't worry, I'll keep your sheep. You go to the... So that's the community house. Yeah. When she said that to me, I said, yes, you just given mm. me my definition of the family and how I live my family. And I thought it was very, very modern as a definition. And I always take mm. joy when I teach in, in, in especially high schools so to teenagers that you, when they're at an age where they would throw away the family, I, I, yeah. uh, I always like to tell that story because we have three houses. And it's, it's, it made me, it freed me because I realized that uh, the, the house that was very important in my life was my uh, live house, is mm. the quality of my friends. You know, when you're 15 years old, when you see me, when now when I see 15 years old living by themselves, I, I nearly cry because I find them so small to live by themselves and take the decision of their life you know, mm -hmm. and uh, no guidance. And uh, so, so I was very lucky to have wonderful friends to choose. So that was instinctive, but I did choose wonderful friends, good friends, well, good, good head, good thinking. Yeah. And, uh, and if I would have stayed in my blood house, it, you know, I was, I was the baby. Uh, and, and we were only five, you know, but it was the time where uh, all the aunties had 15 kids, 12 kids, and uh, so uh, here in Quebec. So uh, we were at five, a very small family. But I was a baby, and my mother was at 200 men to feed. So, yeah. um, and, and so with, with my sibling, I, um, I was like, I felt I was never good enough. I would never... There, there was no place for me, and uh, that was just too much, you know. Yeah. So, and now I think at the end of my life, uh, the community house might be uh, very useful for me, you know. Maybe I should go more. I feel like I'm attracted to the community house, but I'm not a community person, you know, the people that give all yeah. their life to the community. Uh, so you have to know in which house you, you are and when to rest in one and what you can tell in one and not in the other. And you learn things in one house that the others will never, in the other house, will never understand, you know? Yeah. But uh, so it's kind of nice to know you have th these three houses to live in. So that's my definition of the family. So I'm curious to see if like how you've, in more detail, how you've navigated that and possibly what that opens up for, for not just other women, but also... I, um, I, think, uh, the, I think the loyalty we... Um, we mostly have for the parents and not for the sibling. It's very true. When, when um, uh, you know, uh, when uh, both parents, when your second parents die, your mother dies and then your father dies, and then, and then you're yeah. not a child of nobody, right? And, and when your two parents have died, there is a, a personage, what is that in English? A persona that dies. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because you, they see you one way and it seems like they cannot change the way they see you all your life, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so when you're 50 years old and your father says, that's my baby, well, you say, okay, <laughs> you know, okay, dad, uh, if that's what you want, <laughs> you know? But, when, but for the sibling, 
suddenly you feel there's no loyalty in keeping that persona alive, mm -hmm. you know, to please mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And, uh, and mm -hmm. when you hear a woman speaking uh, of the pain, that is something we have in common. We're all sisters, you know. Men are very good to say, oh, that's my brother, my brother, you know. But you never hear a woman presenting themselves saying, hey, that's my sister, that's my sister. Very but true. we're all sisters. Everything is so easy to speak about women. And when we start together and speak about the pain we have to, to grow as a woman, we realize how the family has so, you know, put us down, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in not helping us. Sometimes I'm jealous of someone that, you know, ends up in a family that raise their, you know, make sure everybody rises up equally, boys and girls and the, so, but that is a privilege. It's nearly a privilege you find in the world. Uh, so I don't find, I find that some people, they have to leave their parents. They have to leave that house, the blood house, if they want to grow, you know? Yeah. Because that house will not make them grow. And, uh, and sometimes, and yesterday, you know, I, I mean, I was talking to a friend who has a son of, uh, who's going to be 30, they're still home. And she's, and I said, what are you going to do? When is he going to get out? She says, well, you know, I, I've been thinking that maybe I have to sell the house. So he gets out, you know? And, and, wow. and uh, so, uh, so also parents have sometimes to, you know, go up, pull themselves away from their children. So family when we say oh it's the best place to be in life well i'm not sure you know mm -hmm. when we see now with uh, with uh, the confinement that the brutality for children yeah. and women has gone up then you yeah. say are you sure the family is the greatest place to be then uh, you you mm -hmm. uh, so that's why i i thought that the three houses Mm -hmm. where uh, kind of a nice because you know you can go to the other house if something goes wrong and uh, so I'm curious to see in, in all these like models and dynamics that you did experience was there ever a common thread that allowed for families to feel more functional or less functional than others ones that allowed for more love and more growth um, or it didn't allow or it was like very different well I think there's something about family life. For me, the, when I say it's a tool, it was really wonderful because it doesn't underline the similarities, right? Right away, it underlines the similarities. And a baby that cries at two o'clock in the morning in a house where everybody is sleeping, you, you, suddenly everybody you know, finds he's a little pain, you know? And, and so there's no culture there. There's no, easy, you know, it no. just pisses everybody off at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, and so, so those, all the daily, you know, you get up in the morning and you, uh, you there's breakfast and then, then you start this, the, the kids going to school. And so, so suddenly you, you're, you go from one family to the other and, uh, uh, and then it's the similarity. And then when you, here, for example, you sit with the, with the mother and she starts talking about her children, you know, and this one is that way and this one is that way. And it's like the same vocabulary, you know, they talk yeah. about their children in the same way, the description of a human being, you know, mm. okay, this one, he talks all the time and this one is shy and this one is so, and this one is so, it's always the same words. And even gossip is about the same. When you sit on the balcony and you see the village go by, you know, it's about mm -hmm. talking about the neighbor. So, so it's all the similarities. The differences, the differences is a, a lot about tradition, yeah. about what you have learned, uh, what also, what your parents will, you know, I mean, we think of Malaya, Malala, Malala? Yeah. Uh, uh, Malala. Uh, yeah. We, we think of Malala and, uh, and we think of, I may mean, I always think of her father, mm -hmm. you know, a father who defended mm -hmm. her, who accompanied so, her through, the, through a society where tradition uh, wanted her differently. And so that is an example of how a family mm -hmm. can be different in a society. 
uh, and and also the fact that uh, the I find that in many many societies with these traditions and the, it's always the teenagers that change that start changing. I find mm. that when when teenagers do not understand the traditions, mm. it's time for the traditions to go. And if wow. the, old, the older people do not bend to the will of their young people, there's going to be a clash. You know, they're going to go away. They're going to go away. So then when, when we look at this, because, you know, sometimes I think, like you said, in the Arab world, the word meant happiness. So there's a lot of sometimes, um, I don't want to say baggage, but there's a lot involved in family. Sometimes it feels like the next step. You know, it's like, we have to have families. Obviously we're women, we must have families. And I know that context around that is changing and I'm happy because it actually brings more options, uh, obviously to, to our life and, and it opens the conversations because you're also a woman that, you know, chose not to have a family intentionally as well and has accomplished incredible things. So navigating this world with this context of family, what, what would you, how would you orient them? Well, naturally, it all depends. You know, women are very stuck with what uh, the sentence, what will the neighbors say, you know? Yeah. Uh, I have to marry because all of my girlfriends are married. I have to have a child uh, or, you know, because all my girlfriends are telling me it's time to have a child because they have a child and I don't. So I would advise, uh, forget about that. I think me, uh, I, I did not feel I would be a good mother, you know? Mm. I, I, mm. I I must say, I thought I, I would be too egoistic. I, I, in my head, it was like, you give to, you make a child, you give your life, you know? So, and also I came from a generation, there's many women in my generation who, who don't have children. And uh, because we came from large families, you know, uh, five, 15, 10, 12 kids. So it's a scenario we did not want you know mm -hmm. and 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 it was uh, just at the time of the quiet quiet revolution uh, where suddenly we said we were saying no 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 and we wanted men to change and we wanted the whole society you know uh, because i came from a society where you had to marry virgin also you know yeah. and uh and and so it was uh, never mind i did not want that and i i said no to that now, I know many societies in the world where women feel like they should say no to that. And, mm. and that you don't, if you feel like you cannot love a child, please don't make a child, you know? Mm. Uh, it, we don't have a problem of population. Uh, I mean, we're not in the ages where people needed population uh, yeah. just to work and feed. And because children were, were working, you know, people were making, at the beginning, people were making children because they need hands in the field. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, so why do we make children, right? Why do we make mm -hmm. children for, and for me, the, 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 the beautiful families is where there is love uh, that, that you can feel and where all the family, uh, the, the first where the men and women take a pleasure educating their yeah. children, you know? It's like bringing, bringing them up and uh, um, together, together it makes a big, big difference. And uh, so for me, uh, if you feel you cannot give your life to raising children to be better citizens, I would say, if you don't feel that, don't feel bad about not having any children. So uh, if you feel you're, you're a mother, you know, you're a mother. You know, I, I'd like to have 12. If you feel that very, very strongly, go ahead. But don't do it uh, to please your girlfriend. You know, where you put the, the daughter-in-law in the kitchen and you say, uh, shut up, you know? Yeah. You, you, uh, you don't do that here, you know, anymore. So yeah. uh, you let the couple. And then the couple, they know. I mean, you have to love your children. Now, if you don't, if you don't love each other anymore, respect each other, you know? Oh, yeah. Because At least. And, and yeah. there is more knowledge about the result of your attitude towards your children, how you can destroy a child by your mm -hmm. words from the, from the beginning. So that knowledge 
more and more people having them because books have been written and, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, uh, so we have access to that knowledge. Studies uh, from, the, from the 50s, you know, so much studies have been made. So now you have studies that are over 40, 40 kids. So, so I would say, you know, read some books. And I mean, if you're a woman and you don't, you have children and you have not read a book about how, how to raise a child and the importance of your words to have that child, and then I don't know how you're going to educate. There is no school for parents in this world, you know? Yeah, like, uh, let's say like, uh, we, before we go, we make a child, we would need to have a diploma, you know, and say, well, I've gone to school and I've learned. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, here's I've my graduated. diploma. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that I can destroy a child, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I it's know true. I can. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, maybe it's the first thing we should know that when we, mm. when, when we bring a child to life is that we can yeah. destroy that child. Yeah. And uh, Helen, it's been such a great uh, chat with you. Thank you so much for shedding so much light and such a different perspective as well on, on the concept of family. I loved your definition of the three houses. I yeah. thought that was a beautiful expansion to something that is so, you know, part of society. So I think it definitely opens our horizons, our perspectives and our choices. So thank you for sharing that with us. And I really look forward to diving in deeper on other subjects with you and having you back. So Thanks again for making this time to share this with us. Wonderful. Thank you so much.